morning, everybody. Glad to see everybody in the house of the Lord today, and I'm glad to be here too. Uh, you know, Dad was told y'all that I had a rough week this week. I'm going to tell y'all a little bit about it. So, first thing happened was Tuesday afternoon, Brittany's car breaks down in Lexington. So I have to go meet my brother in Somerset, pick her and Paisley up. And then Wednesday, me and my buddy made plans to go pick the car up from Lexington. So there's a little bit of time in between me getting off work and him coming to pick me up to go get the car. So I decided to take that time, work on my message for today. And as I was working for the message for today, I got this phone call. And I picked up the phone and it was just the gnarliest growling sound on the end of that line. You know how we talk about uh, getting them glory bumps? Yeah, those were some unglory bumps then. It was rough. So I went around the house and I said, you know, Satan, get out of here, you know? And then I went back and I worked on the mess some more. So after we went to Lexington to pick up the car, I get a phone call that my grandpa had had a heart attack. So my buddy drives me on to Louisville so I can be at the hospital with him. And I'm saying all this to say that Satan's fighting hard. He's been fighting me hard all week. So I'm thinking maybe there's something in this message that somebody needs to hear, whether it be within the church or somebody on our YouTube channel, has to hear. Because he's fought tooth and nail to keep me from preaching it. But that's fine, because we're not going to let Satan get in the way of us doing what the Lord wants us to do. So let's get into it. For the message today, we're going to be talking about, as the title suggests, Be Aware of Antichrist Spirits. Now, we have went over false prophets. We have went over false teachers many times. We have went over your megachurch pastors, the ones who are just more concerned about lining their pockets, filling them instead of trying to get people filled with the Holy Spirit, instead of trying to get people led to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've been thinking about the Antichrist lately. I've been thinking about the Antichrist. And in the Bible, it tells us what kind of things that the Antichrist is going to be doing during the tribulation period. Now, you might be thinking, why are we talking about the Antichrist again? We ain't going to be here. We're all going to be raptured out. We don't have to worry about him. The reason we're talking about him again is because... In the times we're living in today, I think we can get a good taste of what it is going to be like whenever the Antichrist shows up on the scene. So, there has been others who have foreshadowed the coming of the Antichrist. And in order to understand that, we have to take a look at the only thing that matters. The only thing that matters, the Word of God. So with that, let us stand and we'll read from God's Word. 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 through 23 says, Dear children, the last hour is here. You have heard that the Antichrist is coming, and already many such Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that the last hour has come. These people left our churches, but they never really belonged with us. Otherwise, they would have stayed with us. When they left, it proved that they did not belong with us. But you are not like that, for the Holy One has given you His Spirit, and all of you know the truth. So I am writing to you, not because you don't know the truth, but because you know the difference between truth and lies. And who is a liar? Anyone who says that Jesus is not the Christ. Anyone who denies the Father and the Son is an antichrist. Anyone who denies the Son doesn't have the Father either, but anyone who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear most righteous Heavenly Father, I come to you once again today, Lord, and I pray that you please just anoint my lips and anoint my tongue today, Father. I pray that you please just fill this house with your Spirit today, Lord, and let the words be spoken, the ones that you want to be spoken, not the words that Tyler wants to be spoken. I want you to lead God and direct me and... Let this message just reach whoever needs to hear it today, Father. As always, I want you to know that I love you, and I praise you, and I thank you for everything you've done. All the many blessings comes, Father. Let's call these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. So 
So from the verses that we have read, we can start by saying that even in those times, they believed that they were in the last days. It goes on to say that you have heard, you have heard that the Antichrist is coming and many such Antichrist have already appeared. From this, we know that the last hour has come. And I want to stop right there because it says at that point in time, many Antichrist had appeared. Now that was roughly 2,000 years ago. So that brings the question. If Antichrist had already appeared at that time, how many Antichrist have appeared from that point in time to where we are at now? <clears throat> the verses say, These people left our churches, but they never really belonged with us. Whenever they left, it proved they did not belong with us. I do want to make a point that this is not referencing somebody who is born again moving from one church to another. That's not what it's talking about here. If that's the case, I've been in several different churches growing up, so I would be considered an antichrist if that was the case. That's not the case here. This is talking about lost people leaving the church, not born-again believers. And you'll see why after. It says, when they left, it proved they did not belong with us. But you are not like that, for the Holy One has given you His Spirit. And all of you know the truth. And you cannot have the Spirit from the Holy One unless you have been born again. Proving the ones leaving the churches at this time period, they had not received the Holy Spirit. The author of these verses asks, Who is the liar? And goes on to say that it is anyone who denies that Jesus is the Christ. Anyone who denies the Father and the Son is an antichrist. Anyone who denies the Son doesn't have the Father either. But anyone who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So what qualification does the verses give for an antichrist? It gives one. Anyone who denies Christ is considered an antichrist. Now, whenever we think of the term antichrist, we think of the one who is going to appear in the tribulation. But the antichrist that have already come, they're bad, but they don't hold a candle to the one that's coming. But the things that these people do are making the way. They're setting the stage for the Antichrist to come. Let me show you an example. Let's read from Revelation 13, 16. It says, He required everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead. And no one could buy or sell anything without that mark, which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. Wisdom is needed here. Let the one with understanding solve the meaning of the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Pretty much everybody in our American politics is Antichrist. And here's the thing. COVID was the perfect opportunity for them to do a test run on the mark of the beast. We had churches closed down where Christians could not be together. And they even took it to the point where you cannot enter certain businesses without either a mask or a vaccine. Now the question is, where did we have to wear our mask? On our face. Where is our forehead located? On our face. And where did they stick the vaccines in? In your arm, which is attached to your hand showing that it is a perfect representation of what is to come. Now, I'm not saying if you got the vaccine that you have taken the mark of the beast. I'm not saying that at all. You're completely fine in that regard. But seeing those similarities verifies to me that it was a test run. Now, I am curious, though, about this new disease that Bill Gates has been talking about. And my curiosity is, is that, is this going to be another test run, or is this going to be the real deal? There have been many people throughout history who fit the bill for this Antichrist figure. You have the original, Nimrod, 
And an interesting parallel that I noticed about Nimrod that proves to me that he is the spirit of the Antichrist is what did he do? First, let's read from from Genesis chapter 10, verses 8 through 12. Cush was also the ancestor of Nimrod, who was the first heroic warrior on earth. Since he was the greatest hunter in the world, his name became proverbial. People would say, this man is like Nimrod, the greatest hunter in the world. He built his kingdom in the land of Babylonia, with the cities of Babylon, Erech, Akkad, and Kalna. From there he expanded his territory to Assyria building the cities of Nineveh, Rehoboth-ur, Kalah, and Rezin, the great city located between Nineveh and Kalah. I know I got all them names wrong. I apologize. But what we can gather from these verses is that Nimrod was the head of Babylonia. He was the head of Assyria. He was the head of all the territories within those confines. Now let's jump a little further and see what he'd done after attaining that much territory. Genesis chapter 11 verses 1 through 4 says, At one time all the people of the world spoke the same language and used the same words. As the people migrated to the east, they found a plain in the land of Babylonia and settled there. They began saying to each other, Let's make bricks and harden them with fire. In this region, bricks were used instead of stone, and tar was used for mortar. Then they said, Come, let's build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. So we know at this time that all of the people migrated to Babylonia. And who was the head of Babylonia? Nimrod. So that means he headed up this tower operation. What does it say the goal of building this tower was? They said, let us build a great city for ourselves with a tower that will reach into the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. So they wanted their towers to reach the skies. Reach the skies. Meaning they wanted their tower to ascend into the heavens. That's strike one. They wanted it to make them famous. That comes from pride. That is strike two. They said it will keep us from being scattered all over the world. So they thought that being unified together and having this tower up in the sky, they thought that because they'd done that, God wouldn't be powerful enough to separate them. That's strike three. So why is it important to bring up Nimrod trying to reach the heavens? Because he was not the first. Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 through 14 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down in the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. So we see that what Nimrod did was exactly what Lucifer did. He had the same goal. He had the same goal. To be better than God. But like the fall of Lucifer, Nimrod's tower did not succeed either. As God did confuse the nations by giving them all different languages and scattering them. So Nimrod is where this Antichrist spirit came from. Notable people who are believed to have had this same spirit after Nimrod. You have Judas Iscariot, Antiochus Epiphanes, Constantine. For more modernist times, you can look at Adolf Hitler, Osama bin Laden, Saddam Hussein, Kim Jong-un, Vladimir Putin, Barack Hussein Obama, just to name a few. And you notice something about all of these leaders that carry the Antichrist spirit. They love death and they love destruction. 
and have been responsible for many mass killings. The Nazi Party, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, they all had their targets. Who did they target? Who did they try to annihilate off the face of the earth? At first they targeted the Jews because that was God's initial chosen people. And then they go to the Christians, the Gentiles who accepted Jesus as the Christ. The point is that these are examples of Antichrist who did, the, who did their evil mainly in the physical. But there are some who do their evil in the spiritual as well. What does it say about the coming Antichrist of the tribulation period? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12 says, This man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power and signs and miracles. He will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction. Because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. So God will cause them to be greatly deceived and they will believe these lies. Then they will be condemned for enjoying evil rather than believing the truth. This is a very important point to be looking at. It says that this man, the Antichrist, will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power and signs and miracles. And here's the thing. The Antichrist is going to be a parallel of Jesus. He's going to be a parallel of Jesus. He's going to be doing things like Jesus, but in an evil way, kind of like an evil twin. Why? Because he will deceive the people with his lies and his false miracles. And the Jewish people at that time will believe that he is the Messiah because of those deceptions. Now here's the question for how it relates to the Antichrist spirit being in today's time. The question is, are false miracles being performed today? With that, we need to go to a couple more verses. Matthew 24, 24, Jesus speaking. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. So we see even here that Jesus himself says that there will be false messiahs, false prophets who will perform great signs and wonders to deceive. Even God's chosen ones if possible. So Jesus gives us a warning here. Look out because there's people out there who are performing false miracles. Don't be deceived by them. To give us a little more insight, let us look at an example of a false miracle. Let's read from Exodus chapter 7, verses 10 through 12. It says, So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did what the Lord had commanded them. Aaron threw down his staff before Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh called in his own wise men and sorcerers, and these Egyptian magicians did the same thing with their magic. They threw down their staffs, which also became serpents. But then Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. This is a perfect illustration of both a miracle and a false miracle. Aaron's staff turns into a serpent through whose power? God's power. So how did the staffs of the Egyptian magicians turn into serpents? Through the power of Satan. And I know what you're thinking. Do you honestly believe that things like this could happen in today's time? Yes, yes I do. I believe they do happen in today's time and I believe they are used to deceive people and keep their focus off of God. Have you ever thought about how magicians do their tricks? Now I understand that there are some of them who are just smoking mirrors and you know you can write off what they've done, easily explained. But I remember when I was a kid, I used to watch that show, uh, Chris Angel, Mind Freak. And, man, he did some wild stuff that you couldn't even explain. I remember one episode he did where uh, he, like, swallowed a quarter, and then the quarter, like, ran up his arm, and he cut his arm open and pulled the quarter out. 
And later on, I'd seen something with David Blaine, which I was watching that for research, not for entertainment. And he had took like a needle and shoved it like all the way through his arm. And you sit there and watch the thing move. If somebody does something that is unexplainable in the physical, in the human sense, and they do not attribute it to Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit, that is something that has taken place because of demonic influence. And it is all a part of Satan's plan to do what he can to distract you and keep your eyes off of God. What does the Word say? Colossians 2.8 says, Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world, rather than from Christ. There are demonic spirits in the world today that follow the path of the Antichrist spirit who use the same tactics associated with the Antichrist. And what does this verse say? Essentially, do not let anyone capture you with meaningless concepts that come from human thinking and the spiritual powers of this world. Where do the spiritual powers of this world come from? They come directly from Satan. And we have the power through the Holy Spirit to overcome anything that Satan and his demons throw at us. So do not be deceived by anything they throw at us. We know that Satan and his demons rule this world, but whenever we are faced against them, we need to remind them, God is coming back. He is coming to take his world back. And Satan and his demons, all they've got to look forward to is a lake of fire. With that, let's get a song of invitation. There's a lot of evil in the world today. Honestly, there's more evil today than I've ever seen. You know, and that, everybody thinks about demons and stuff like that, and they think, oh, well, that's all fairy tales because people have been told that their whole life. It's not. It is real. And we're at war with them all the time. So I ask you today, do not be deceived by them. And if you feel God pouring on your heart, answer God. So, if there's anybody who does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, please come to this altar today and we'll talk and we, you will get to know Him. And if there's anybody that has a demon that they're struggling with, anything that they're fighting, anything that they cannot get off their back, come up here today and give it to God. He'll take it from you.